In suburban Buffalo, amidst a crowd of fervent fans clamoring for the autograph of Sabres legend Dominic Hasek, Dave and Adam's Collectibles was the defender of order. To avoid constant delays, the Collectibles shop didn't allow fans to take photos with the Dominator. This rule, draconian to some, was in fact to save the save percentage king from himself. Hasek approached the task of greeting fans and signing autographs with the same intensity that defined his illustrious career. With unwavering attention, he scrutinized every item placed before him, frequently sharing a story or two with fans. And when it came to signing his name, Hasek spared no effort, ensuring that each autograph was a masterpiece unto itself, a testament to his dedication and attention to detail. Then, there was a sudden burst of activity as Kyle Tedesco burst onto the scene. A devoted 34-year-old Sabres superfan, Tedesco found himself without an item for the coveted autograph. Undeterred, he put his 18-month-old son onto the table to pose for a photo with the Sabres legend. They said no photos, but Tedesco needed to immortalize the moment. Little Dominic Tedesco, named after his father's hockey idol, sat bewildered in his blue and gold Sabres cap, clad in a red and black zipper fleece and khakis. For Kyle Tedesco, it was a full circle moment that began at age 11, when he first met Hasek at a Sabres signing event. As an 11-year-old, Kyle hadn't seen a goalie who played like the Dominator, and more than two decades later, he hasn't seen another since. While other netminders boast more championships or career wins, none have matched the mastery displayed by Hasek. The Dominator was a one-of-a-kind goaltending virtuoso, whose unparalleled blend of style and substance set him apart from his peers. A trailblazer in every sense, he stands alone as the sole goaltender to win consecutive Hart trophies, while also amassing an impressive collection of six Beznas. His achievements include two Stanley Cup championships with the Red Wings, and a gold medal in one of the most fiercely contested Olympic tournaments in history. He was the kind of goalie that kept the NHL's top scorers awake at night. He had a way of getting into players and coaches' heads. When teams faced Buffalo, their focus turned to the opposition's goalie, unlike against any other team. Teams did extensive pre-scouting, formulating strategies for how to beat Hasek. But it didn't matter how much they prepared, because Hasek was so unpredictable. Hasek's career goals against average of 2.20 remains the NHL's lowest since World War II, while his 922 save percentage stands as the highest. He led the league in shutouts on four occasions, and maintained the top save percentage for six consecutive years. Hasek was relentless in his pursuit to stop every puck. In a sporting landscape where few hockey players were household names in the United States, Hasek's brilliance catapulted him into the spotlight, even earning him a starring role in a MasterCard commercial. Standing at 6'1", and weighing less than 170 pounds, he defied physics, dominating the net with unparalleled agility, relentless drive, and unwavering determination. In his larger-than-life presence, he maximized every part of his slender frame, using unorthodox methods to deny opposing shooters. His unconventional tactics included dropping his stick to smother the puck with his blocker hand, and stopping the puck with his forehead. Sometimes he made scorpion saves on the goal line, leaving observers wondering how he achieved the impossible. He could pull off a diving poke check, or stack the pads to shut the door. He wasn't afraid to venture out of his crease when the puck was in play. It seemed perilous at times, but he rarely faltered. His aggression was unparalleled. He boldly challenged the opposition, doing whatever it took to keep the puck out of the net. Drafted by the Blackhawks in the 10th round, 199th overall in 1983, Hasek's ascent coincided with the stifling grip of the Iron Curtain over Czechoslovakia. Despite his standout performances in the Czech Extra Liga at just 16 years old, achieving NHL greatness remained a distant dream. The 1989 Velvet Revolution finally offered Hasek a chance to join the Blackhawks organization, but he found himself warming the bench behind future Hall of Famer Ed Belfour. Greatness wasn't at the forefront of Hasek's mind, at least not initially. When he first arrived in the NHL, his sole focus was cracking the lineup. Hasek's first taste of playoff action came courtesy of Blackhawks coach Mike Keenan's notorious impatience with goaltenders. Facing a potential sweep by the Pittsburgh Penguins in the 1992 Stanley Cup Finals, Keenan opted to pull Bell for just over six minutes into Game 4. Pittsburgh sniper Yarmir Yager knew his team couldn't take the unknown goalie lightly. Yager wasn't one for many words, but between periods, he rose to address his team, assuring them Hasek was a phenomenal goalie who simply hadn't been given a chance. Hasek's performance was nothing short of spectacular. He executed a jaw-dropping stick save on Kevin Stevens, four to two breakaways from Mario Lumio, and ventured out of his crease to disrupt a breakaway. But despite his heroics, he conceded four goals on 25 shots, and it was the Penguins who hoisted the cup. Four months later, the Blackhawks traded Hasek to the Sabres. The Hawks privately questioned his heart and desire, despite his impressive numbers. In exchange for Hasek, the Hawks acquired Christian Rutu and a draft pick that later became Eric Daze. Then, in the 1993 expansion draft, the Sabres left Hasek unprotected. The Panthers and Mighty Ducks overlooked him, selecting six other goalies between them instead. But the Panthers and Ducks soon regretted this oversight. 
With Buffalo, Hasek's name began to climb the statistical rankings, and his reputation as an elite goalie started to grow. In his first season as a full-fledged starter, Hasek put up a 1.95 goals against average, and a 9.30 save percentage. He won the Vesna and finished second in Hart Trophy voting. He was no longer relegated to the shadows of the league's elite. One of Hasek's most remarkable stretches unfolded after a rocky start to the 97-98 season. The Sabres' faithful briefly turned on him, partially fueled by their frustration with off-season drama that saw the departure of GM John Muckler and reigning Jack Adams winning coach Ted Nolan. But Hasek blocked out the noise and went on a remarkable run. Over a mesmerizing 19-game span in November and December, he registered an astonishing seven shutouts. Teammates marveled at Hasek's meticulous preparation and passion for the game. The morning after a 70-save performance and a four-overtime 1-0 victory against the Devils in the 1994 playoffs, he was back on the ice practicing the next day. If any doubts lingered about Hasek's dominance after he established himself in Buffalo, his remarkable showing at the 1998 Olympics quashed them all. In what he deems his crowning athletic achievement, Hasek propelled the Czech Republic to gold, boasting a 0.97 goals against average and a 961 save percentage. He conceded just two goals in the Czech's final three games against hockey powerhouses the United States, Canada, and Russia. In the semi-final shootout against Canada, Hasek outdueled Patrick Waugh, denying Theo Fleury, Ray Bork, Joe Neundijk, Eric Lindros, and Brendan Shanahan in succession. At a spirited rally in Old Town Square, a throng of 70,000 Czechs erupted into chants of Hasek to the castle. The chant encapsulated a blend of sporting triumph and national pride. It expressed a desire to see their hockey hero honored by the president at Prague Castle. Fast forward a quarter century, and the cerebral Hasek finds himself mulling over a potential foray into politics. After his hockey career, Hasek majored in history and earned a teaching certification. But in 1998, he had plenty more to give as the world's greatest goaltender. During his tenure in Buffalo, the personal accolades continued to pile up, but the coveted team championship remained frustratingly out of reach. The perennial debate over the greatest goalie of all time invariably circles back to Stanley Cups. In 2001, Patrick Waugh won the fourth championship of his career. Meanwhile, the Sabres' Cinderella run to the 1999 Stanley Cup Finals was the closest Hasek had come. At the same time, financial constraints loomed large in Buffalo. Contract disputes, including one with Selkie Award-winning captain Michael Pekka, further complicated matters. Although Buffalo retained a one-year option on Hasek's contract for the 2001-2002 season, it was Hasek who held the leverage. He was eager to join a team with legitimate cup aspirations, and recognized the limitations of the Sabres roster better than anyone. He'd done all he could to lead them to a championship, but they simply didn't have the talent to contend. So he pushed for a trade to the Red Wings, with the sole objective of winning the Stanley Cup. At 37 years old, Hasek wasn't just along for the ride. He led the NHL in wins, a feat that had eluded him during his tenure in Buffalo, despite his dominance in other statistical categories. He also boasted a stellar 2.17 goals against average and a 9.15 save percentage. In the 2002 Western Conference Finals, Hasek again faced off against Patrick Waugh, with the Avalanche leading the series three games to two. And the series heading back to Denver for Game 6, the odds were in Waugh's favor. But Hasek shut down the Avs 2-0 on their home ice, and shut them out again in Game 7 back in Detroit. In the Stanley Cup Finals, the Carolina Hurricanes took Game 1 in overtime, but the Red Wings rallied to win the next four games. Hasek broke an NHL record in Game 4 with his sixth shutout of the postseason. His quest for a Stanley Cup was finally complete. For Hasek, it was a moment of immense relief. Following the lockout, the 41-year-old Hasek signed with the Ottawa Senators for the 2005-2006 season, and he showed no signs of slowing down. By December, he boasted a 28-10-4 record, with a 2.09 goals against average and a 9.25 save percentage. But a devastating adductor injury suffered during the Turin Olympics sidelined him for the rest of the season. Despite finishing as the top seed in the Eastern Conference, the Senators bowed out in the second round of the playoffs without Hasek between the pipes. But Hasek's NHL journey wasn't quite finished. In 2008, his final NHL season, he clinched another Stanley Cup as a member of the Red Wings, this time as the backup to Chris Osgood. Sharing duties during the regular season, Hasek started 40 games, helping Osgood and the Red Wings secure the Jennings Trophy for the fewest goals allowed. Following his retirement from the NHL in 2008, Hasek played one season in the Czech League and one in the KHL. It wasn't until the age of 46 that he finally hung up his pads for good. During his career, Hasek's greatest satisfaction came from knowing that when he was between the pipes, his teammates believed they had a chance to win any game against any opponent. He was the one they looked to, and the one they trusted to lead them to victory. That's all for this look back at Dominic Hasek. Thanks for tuning in. Please like and subscribe to support the channel.